Welcome to Fallout 76, this is Jim. In this video, we're going to take a look at completing daily challenges for today, Sunday, June the 23rd, 2024. Let's take a look at and see what we got for today. Alright, looks like we got Double Score Weekend, which continues on, it being Sunday. Now, this is a great time to be using Score Booster Drinks, if you have them. And of course, if you look at the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can use a score booster drink. It is 25% for 24 hours. We can only use one score booster drink at a time. We can't use multiple at a time. Now you can get score booster drinks in the past from previous scoreboards or from the previous season 16. And we can also get score booster drinks in the atomic shop if you so wish. Now I don't know anyone who does this, but they are available for us to buy using atoms. Right down here in the utility section. Again, you can decide if you want to do that or not. I'm just showing you that they are available to you if you so wish. All right. Now I have many videos on my channel that will help you guys out to give you different ideas, different locations, easy areas, hard areas. That way there, if you're a brand spanking new player to the game, you're a returning player, even if you're an experienced player, this is a particular daily or weekly challenge that's giving you a hard time or trouble. I'm sure you'll find a video on my channel that will help you. I try to keep my videos as updated as I possibly can. Of course, you guys are awesome. The great comments and tips, which are greatly appreciated. Okay, let's get some good ones here. Let's take a look here. Okay, let's get on top of the old tree house. We can get closer to the old Tinker's workbench. There we go. Alright, so the first one we'll look at here today, let's see here, Scrap trying to produce Ceramic 5. So again, we can find Ceramic all around the wasteland. We have Ceramic plates, we have vases, we have lots of coffee cups that we can find all around the wasteland. And uh, teapots, a real good source of Ceramic, uh, but probably one of the best spots for Ceramic, hands down, end of story, is right up here. At the Palace of the Winding Path, this place is full of ceramic, full of it. Uh, another fairly decent spot, which is fairly easy. Again, you have to deal with some Blood Eagles. It's the Kill Box. Pretty good spot for ceramics there as well. And those of you who uh, watched my five-part series of Exploring Skyline Valley, there are pretty much every, almost every location had a good chunk of ceramics <laughs> around, okay? Like in little coffee cups and such, so just an FYI. Now, if you're looking for the fastest, quickest, easiest way, if you're a person who is short on time, you have to go to school, go to work, go to family stuff, you can bulk ceramic at the Tinker's Workbench. Just go ahead and go craft. All you do, you go down to bulk. You're down here to bulk ceramic, so as long as you have 15 ceramic scrap and 2 plastic in your stash of scrap box, this method will work for you. And all you do is, all you have to do is bulk just one ceramic and then you scrap it. And that is hands down the fastest, quickest, easiest way, because why not? We're doing daily, weekly challenges. But I've been kind of changing it up a little bit, because uh, there are so many new people to the game. So I have actually been looking, uh, going out, trying to find some stuff. Uh, now, I usually uh, take you guys around. Uh, we're going to go right up here to the Palace of the Winding Path, just to kind of show you some examples. Let's pop up here today. Now, there are some stuff up here we cannot pick up that looks ceramic, uh, but the majority of it we can. All right, we're gonna head right to the main building. Now, there's gonna be some scorched inside, but that's fine. So we have these little flower pots out here, very easy. Let's go ahead and grab one of them. Let's open up our items here. So that one flower pot, as you can see, one ceramic. Okay? So two, three. I don't think. Let's check the other side here. Alright, we can't pick those guys up. <laughs> now we all come across these vases. See what that vase is. One ceramic, as we can see. And this place is loaded, loaded with vases, all right? So we can go inside the main building.
There's a mall rat around somewheres. There's right there. That's enough. Jeb, I think he's dead. What do you think? <laughs> oh wow, two stim picks on that guy. And again, there are some stuff we can pick up, but the majority of stuff we can. Ornamental vase, those ones there are pretty good. They actually have copper in them as well. See, this one here can't pick up. But the majority of them we can. Uh, There's a really good uh, ceramic uh, hot spot, I should say. All right, let's see how much we have on us here. All right, so the ornamental vase, ceramic. So uh, with the white ornamental vases, these guys here are three ceramic. Uh, so how many do we need again? We need five. It's always we need. Okay, we get more than enough. Let's head back to our camp. And again, this place is full of ceramics. You can go ahead and clear out the scorched if you so wish. It's a pretty good spot. And fairly easy spot as well, especially if you're a lower lower, lower level uh, person. All right, let's pop up here. Let's go and scrap this stuff. Yeah, more than enough. Just like that, guys. Scrap done to produce ceramic. Five for five, done. But again, if you're short on time, and uh, you just want to get your daily weekly challenges done to get your score and tickets. You can just bulk it for the fastest, quickest, easiest way. Definitely nothing wrong with that. What's next here, Jim? What is next? Let's go ahead, collect burnt books five. So I did make a video, I would say maybe about two and a half months ago. It's not very old. Uh, probably one of the best spots to collect burnt books is actually right up here in good old Summersville. As soon as you spawn in, there's a house on the right-hand side. Once upon a time, it used to be infested with Mylurks, but now you'll find maybe four weakened ghouls if you're lucky. Uh, but this is probably one of the best spots where you can actually reset your game uh, by picking up 250, 255 items, because this house is loaded with burnt books. Let's go over here. Uh, now, I, <laughs> I, after I did make that video three months ago, I have <laughs> had people kind of mention the odd time that they go there and there's no burnt books at all. Uh, and that's because people are picking them all up because they're using this location to reset their game. And if you're limited to public servers, that's what you're going to have to deal with, unfortunately. So you're going to have to server hop until you get on a server um, where the burnt books are there or enough of them are. So just a, just a little heads up there, okay? Just got to be a little patient. You have to be a little patient in this game because everyone and their dog is going after this stuff. Let's clear out the uh, ghouls here first. And uh, we do have Kill a Feral Ghoul daily challenge to see you see popping up on the screen, but we'll still kind of go through the paces. We'll be lucky to find two more here, but we'll go ahead and clear them out. Look at that, there's another floral vase there. You know, like this, uh, this lamp here, right? Ceramics in it, right? Great spot. As you can see, we got like Oh my lord. What is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the game lately, but it's been really acting really weird uh, for me anyway. But as you can see, all let's close this door. All these burnt books, like they're just everywhere is all up, but <laughs> it's supposed to be nicely stacked on the uh, left hand side. But uh, not as much. Look, there's more ceramic base. So we get to came here for a ceramic as well. <laughs> Pretty darn good spot. Bunch of them there. There's usually a bunch of burnt books, but they're all over the floor, as you can see. Okay. Uh, there's more burnt books upstairs. All over the place. And they're kind of all over the place because, uh, you know, the explosive effect that they have going on. And uh, that's why they're kind of scattered about. So just an FYI. But yeah, there's all kinds of floral broken lamps you could have got up we could have got our ceramic here one stop shop all right let's go ahead we're going to uh collect and of course when you scrap burnt books we will get cloth okay but there's all kinds of burnt books here and this is why 
sometimes if you come here, there, there might not be anyone here because there's so many burnt books. People are just coming here in order to reset their gameplay. All right. FYI, just a heads up. What's next here, Jim? What is next? All right, let's continue on. Kill a feral ghoul 10. So again, you can find feral ghouls all around the wasteland. Once upon a time, this place was infested with Mylurks in Summersville, but uh, this house anyway. But now there's uh, maybe about four or five feral ghouls here. Uh, but in terms of real easy feral ghouls, we have just west of Vault 76 in the upper and lower parking lot. Uh, we have the Alpine River Cabins as well down here. Maybe four to five ghouls down here if you're lucky. Probably one of the best spots here is in Morgantown. It's a pretty big city. Every four or five, or sorry, every block you'll find maybe four to six uh, patches of feral ghouls around like every other block here in this city. It's probably one of the best spots for feral ghouls. You'll find feral ghouls in the eastern regional penitentiary. Right down here in the Charleston Capitol building. Again, it's a little bit harder area. Another harder area is the White Springs Golf Club. And right down here in Lewisburg as well. Just to kind of give you guys as many options as I can. Uh, let's go up here and finish this off at Vault 76 if we can. Nice and easy little spot. Now again, if you're a person who doesn't like the fast travel, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. If you come across a feral ghoul, <laughs> feral ghoul is a feral ghoul, right? Doesn't matter where you're at. So just west of Vault 76, we got some weakened ghouls. Once upon a time, there used to be... 10 Liberators here is actually a pretty good spot. It was actually a video of mine. But uh, since then, it's no longer valid, which is unfortunate. And the reason why they made that switch, in case you guys are wondering, is because uh, the developers thought that the Liberators were a little too hard. But at that time, uh, they had done something to the game where they made... Oh, this guy's got a pack of circuits on him. This, um, where they made the game... The robots a little harder for some reason and those of you who've been playing for maybe within this past year remember that time and their lasers and the flamethrowers that the mr handys had were uh, were they would just cut through you like swiss cheese so they changed that area to, to weaken ghouls and i was hoping that they would change them back to the liberators uh because they had fixed that issue but they still have these ghouls here which is fine i think it's not going to change but I still keep the video around just uh, just for those of you who might uh, remember the back in the day, I guess. I don't know. Let's see what we got here. This guy up here. They will come across these guys. They'll come out of the, uh, the woodwork a little bit. Oh. See how they just kind of come out of the rubble? Two bobby pins, nice. Uh, imagine if he had a bobby pin on him. <laughs> Two bobby pins in a row, that'd be awesome. All right, there you guys go. We finished that off. As you can see, uh, maybe maybe about seven of them here or so. Pretty decent. All right, what's next here? What is next? Let's go ahead and click Brain Fungus 5. So... We've had this as a weekly challenge. You can check out that video I made last Tuesday. Uh, we're fine. We'd go through a quite a bit of spots for brain fungus. So brain fungus we can find in the mire region. Uh, usually there's like like little rivers and little ponds that are kind of unmarked, okay? And you'll find brain fungus just kind of laying around the mire area, even down here in the cranberry bog area. Uh, but you can come over here to the Rusty Pick, which is a free fast travel. There are several patches of brain fungus inside the building, which is pretty cool. It's very neutral in there. There's no enemies. It's pretty awesome. Uh, another pretty decent spot. There are two death claws here, so you just got to watch out for that. But the abandoned waste dump, I bring you guys here sometimes as well. Great, great spot for brain fungus. And of course, we have the Windigo Cave. The Windigo Cave is uh, can be quite dangerous if you're a low-level player, but this is a treasure trove for brain fungus. Uh, now, I do want to make a mention. Uh, there's a subscriber 
of mine who had mentioned, uh, I think it's Jefferson, had mentioned about Brain Funk as being in behind the uh, General's uh, Steakhouse, in between General's Steakhouse and Robo, Co uh, Robco, Roboco, wow, Jim, wow, <laughs> Robco Research Center. So let's actually fast travel the General Steakhouse, and uh, there shouldn't be any enemies where we're going to go. We're just going to hit the stream. <laughs> And there's a couple little patches of brain fungus here as well. Now there is a perk card that will help us out here in this uh, in this chance is under perception. It is called Green Thumb. We price as much in harvesting flora. Now usually this perk card doesn't work on anything else, but for some reason, when you pick up brain fungus, you pick up two brain fungus with this card, but you get credit for two brain fungus. But this is brain fungus is the only one that works like that. Everything else doesn't for some reason, and I don't know why. So this perk card is really good to have. I'm a carnivore, and I have it equipped all the time. For me, that do daily weekly challenges, it's a time saver. That's that's really the only reason why I have it, and it just helps me out when I make these videos. So just to let you know, all right? So we're gonna head this way here. We're gonna go under this little bridge. And there's going to be some brain fungus here. Now watch what happens. We pick up two. We get credit for two. And I don't know why that is, but it's brain fungus is the only thing that works. All right, let's go along here. Now there shouldn't be a whole lot of enemies down here. I was down here a little bit earlier just kind of checking it out. Just based on uh, Jefferson's uh, tip. Don't normally come this way for brain fungus, but... Uh, Thought I'd check it out. Another little patch there. It's a little patch there. There we go. Done. And there's a, a fair good sized patch down here. There's a little kind yeah, of like a trailer kind of deal. And there's a usually a settler that's around as well. And there's usually a patch. Where is it at here? All right, there's a patch of brain fungus right here as well. I think that's actually two or three patches right here. Uh, but that's not too bad. So that's pretty good. Um, as you can see, no enemies around. That's uh, pretty awesome. Oh, there's uh, Rachel there today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's not too bad. Not too bad. Just trying to give you guys some other options. So just bringing you guys to the same areas all the time. Because sometimes you guys are on uh, public servers with other people. And you're going to these spots. And you guys are having a hard time trying to find. So that's why I try to give as many ideas as I can when I'm talking. All right. Uh, what's next here, Jim? What is next? Cripple Protectron or Robo Brains Arm 2. So we, again, we can find Protectrons and Robo Brains around the wasteland. Uh, we get a pretty good spot up here in Clarksburg. Of course, the lower section is full of ghouls, but the upper section will have some Protectrons. And there'll be enough protectrons up there for you to cripple one or two and get credit for that. And there's other robots there as well. Another good spot for protectrons is right down here at uh, Beckley. Uh, amongst other robots as well. But there's, I would say, maybe, if you're lucky, four or five protectrons down here. And uh, it's not that bad of a spot. You just got to make your way down here. Just down the road from uh, Canton Park, if you so wish. But it's a pretty good spot. I'll bring you guys down there as well. Now, the Beckley Mine Exhibit, we have a 75% chance, I would say, to get Robo Brains. Sometimes there are Protectrons, but sometimes, most times, I would say, there are Robo Brains that show up, and then you got to uh, destroy them in order to claim uh, that workshop. So, I would say most times we go, that's where we'll find them. Of course, we also have a bunch of Protectrons up here in Sugar Grove, inside Sugar Grove itself, uh, which is a pretty good spot for Protectrons. Uh, now we don't know down here in uh, the Skyline uh, Valley region, uh, we do have some Protectrons, or I should say some Robo Brains right down here at the Hawksbill Weather Station. Uh, you guys have seen me do the quest line for that, and every time we go there, there's at least four Robo Brains. So let's pop down here today and try it out. We're trying to incorporate uh, the newer parts of the map just to kind of get us uh, f to frequent that area a little bit more. Uh, no, I don't think it's going to be right away, but we might have, uh, you know, within, I would say, 
if not within this season or maybe even next season, they might get us to come down to the Skyline Valley region more doing day of the weekly chest. So there's our protect our robo brains right there. There's usually two of them patrol on this area and then the other area there'll be two more. So what we gotta do is we got to cripple their arms. If we do it right, all we need is one robo brain, right arm, left arm. Or if you're in an area where there's protectrons, left arm, right arm kind of deal. Whatever you want to do. You can free aim if you so wish. You guys have seen me do free aiming down here in Watoga. All kinds. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Watoga's up here now. <laughs> down here in uh, Watoga. Of course, there are a bunch of protectrons in around here. If you completed Mare for a day, they will be passive. But you can still come here if you so wish. If you didn't complete Mare for a day, you just got to be careful because there's a lot of robots around. Okay? Just an FYI. Now, I like to use VATS myself. When you use VATS, there's a perk card that'll help you out with that under perception. It's called Concentrated Fire. This allows you to move your VATS around from head, torso, arms, and legs. And that's what I prefer to do, but you can play your game whatever way you want. So let's get over here. So, left arm. There we go. Keep our protector on arm. Our Robo Brain's arm, two for two. Just like that. Oh, he's a legendary. Wow. That's pretty good. And there'll be two more of these guys right here at the Hawksbill weather station pretty good spot that we actually have oh wow you gotta be careful of that too if you do just if you do knock their uh, arms off that's what happens they will destroy themselves like that so don't approach them too quick <laughs> are you going to uh, blow up with them as you can see we are in caution another bad boy over there all right good stuff it's pretty good having a 100% reliable spot for Robo Brains. That's good to see that they did that. What's next here, Jim? Collect a lighter, cigarette, or cigar 5. Again, I did make a video, I would say four months ago, where we actually look um, scrap junk to produce um, cloth. And we go around, we look for our cigarette packages. You can check out that video if you so wish. Uh, there's a pretty good, pretty good spot to find cigarette packages and cigarette cartons, which are even bigger right here at Sugar Grove. It's a little treasure trove. You have to get way in there now. Just an FYI, you have a 50% chance you'll meet an Assaultron at the very end and a 50% chance that the Assaultron will not be there. It'll just be a Mr. Gutsy. So just, <laughs> just an FYI, okay? And... Almost to when you get to that spot, there'll be a couple turrets. There is a back room where you can enter, go to a terminal, and deactivate the turrets. Or you can destroy the turrets. That's what I usually do. I just usually destroy the turrets. But just an FYI, the Assaultron is one of those ones that go invisible <laughs> if he shows up. But there has been plenty of times, you guys have seen in my videos, where the Assaultron is not there. It's just a Mr. Gutsy. So... You just got to be careful, but it is a treasure trove for packs of cigarettes, amongst other things, okay? Uh, in terms of lighters, uh, probably one of the best ways to get lighters is, again, through ghouls. Uh, we can find patches of ghouls in around, as I mentioned, uh, Morgantown. Every block will have about a patch of four to six ghouls, and ghouls are a good source of lighters, uh, sometimes gold-plated lighters at that. Now, if you come here to the Pleasant Valley Ski Resort, if you go all the way to the basement, uh, I, f I forget what quest, what the name of the quest is, but it's part of the Wastelanders quest line. All the way to the basement, you have an access card to get you in, and there is a bellhop in there. If you collect the Pleasant Valley Ski tickets, you can give him a ticket, and he will give you a gold-plated lighter every single time, as well as pre-war money. Okay, uh, so again, that's another great way to do it. 
But again, I have been used trying to use uh, Skyline Valley the best way for these daily weekly challenges just to kind of get us used to coming down here. Uh, as I we, during the part five uh, series, um, part five of five, I should say, we came here to Camp Liberty, home of the communists, which is a new human enemy. And there was a fire pit and there was full of cigarette cartons down there full. So that's where we're going to go here today, and we're going to check it out. <clears throat> and again, you can watch those other videos of me going through Sugar Grove. You just got to be very careful then. You might come face to face with an assault drop. And we will have to go through some communists here at Camp Liberty, but that's not a problem. This guy here is just waking up. Let's get something to drink here, Jim. Watch that commander. The commander's got a flamer on them. Let me know in the comments if you guys have come down here yet. Camp Liberty. There is a treasure hunt start that we can do down here. And I did do a video on that just yesterday. Or uploaded it yesterday anyway. And you can check that out if you so wish. If you're having trouble trying to find area but it's a fun little treasure hunt to do all right let's pick this stuff up while we're here two stim packs hot dog it's all right It's one thing about human enemies, for those of you who are new, human enemies are a good source of stim packs. Cultists. Blood Eagles. Alright. So we're gonna head this way here, and there's a big fire pit over here. And I made note of it during that uh, part five of five series. Where I explain that. All right, so as we can see, this little campfire here, and there are loads of cigarettes. So there's a cigarette carton there. There we go, one to five, cigarette carton. Two of five, okay. It, it's, it's a real good spot. And there's canned dog food there, of course. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, game. Another package. Get these single packs. There we go. Just like that, guys just like that and there's more more around so this is a pretty decent spot this might be a little bit easier than going through sugar grove okay what's this here camp fire tail i will keep that for some other time maybe um <laughs> um yeah so this is a pretty decent spot again sugar grove this might be a better location than sugar grove now for the packs of cigarettes uh but you can decide whatever you want to do to be honest Okay. Uh, what's next here, Jim? What is next? Scrap to produce plastic 10, so let's take a look. I have a feeling that the packs of cigarettes have plastic in them. Yeah, they do. Okay, good stuff. Let's head back. How many do we need? So we got uh, one, two... Oh yeah, we have we have more than enough. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. You know, pick up this one here just in case. Burp. Okay, let's head back to our camp. It's a method behind my madness, eh? <laughs> All right. 
right, let's head up here. Of course, it's uh, we're playing in the dark as we always seem to be doing for some reason. All right, so we're back at our camp. A uh, scrap gun to produce plastic 10. So again, if you're a person who was short on time, you're just a busy person, you have a busy life, we can bulk plastic at the Tinker's Workbench. Let's go ahead and look at that for a second. So we go craft, we go to bulk, go down here to bulk plastic. So as long as you have 12 molded plastic in your stash or scrap box, you just uh, craft one molded plastic and then you just scrap it. And then that you will get credit for that daily challenge hands down the fastest quickest easiest way okay definitely wouldn't blame you for doing that however <laughs> as i just showed you there seeing how we went for those pack of cigarettes this pack of cigarettes and the cartons of cigarettes will have plastic so the cigarette cartons the bigger ones actually have two plastic instead of one amongst other great things like asbestos all right so you saw where we went we went right down here at the Camp Liberty, right around that fire pit. And I think you can find packets of cigarettes all around uh, Camp Liberty as well. That's just more concentrated in around that fire pit. Let's go ahead. We're going to go scrap. Scrap these uh, cigarettes. We'll just make her. Yeah, there we go. Scrap done to produce plastic 10 for 10. Uh, life preservers are also a good source of plastic. We can find life preservers right easy right here in uh, good old Flatwoods right at the Green Country Lodge. There should be at least four or five life preservers in around that little swimming pool area. Real easy spot for some plastic there as well. And I think a life preserver will give you two plastic as long as I can remember that right. All right, so just going to give you another good example, okay? But if you're short on time, definitely the best way, you know, bulk it and then scrap it at your at your Tinker's Workbench. And I think we're done. We are. Double score weekend, guys. I'm sure double score weekend will uh, spill out into tomorrow, Monday. So that's pretty awesome. And again... Thank you very much for your guys' support. Uh, I really appreciate the comments and the great tips you guys give to not only me, because you know it's—I don't know every little every little thing in the game. It's always good good to get uh, good comments from folks and uh, good positive energy. I love it, and uh, and that. And again, if you guys are looking to explore the Skyline Valley region, I did do a five-part series. Everything is time-stamped. We found all the locations and we found some unmarked locations and some new enemies and it's a lot of fun and we also did the quest line so i am done the quest line now and uh, the last three episodes i will be uh, uploading tomorrow so you can check those out tomorrow if you so wish i also did the uh, the pioneer treasure hunt we started down here at camp liberty and you can check out that video if you so wish. And it's very easy to do. But if you do run into trouble, you can check out my video. Again, that video is also timestamped just to kind of give you guys a little hint if you so wish. There you guys go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share when you have the chance. It really helps me out. I'd like to thank my channel members, Artistically Arranged, Boogaloo Bronson, Michael Edwards, Nigel Whiffen, Heather, White Tribe Starwin, 138, Robco. Thank you all so very much. And I hope you all have a nice day. What do you guys think of my outfit anyway? The monarch cultist outfit. Or the cultist monarch outfit, whatever you want to call it. Pretty nice, eh? And I have the, uh, the little backpack to go with it. Nice.